CBN News, this is Montana This Morning. You can't depend on the post office anymore. It's really sad. The problems at Bozeman's Baxter Lane Post Office just not going away. At 632, find out the root of the problem, what Montana U.S. Senator John Tester says about it. And Wyoming says, not in our state. Lawmakers are talking about drugs, crime, scams? Nope, it's electric cars. At 635, learn how that could happen and hear about some Montana legislatures, legislators who will also want to discourage electric vehicles. Well, good morning and happy Wednesday, Southwest Montana. We're over the halfway mark through January. Too, uh, by the way. Uh, uh, How'd yeah. that happen? I don't know. Flying right late. along. Yeah. Flying right along. Uh, and it was fairly warm uh, for the first part of uh, January. Mm -hmm. um, and then the somebody switched on the AC. And it's a little brisk yeah. out there. In the, the fog machine, it. too. Oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, dealing with some fog <laughs> in some areas. It's not as dense as it has been, but man, it is cold out there. Uh, back up to one degree in Butte. Uh, most areas into the teens in single digits. Uh, mainly dealing with quiet conditions for the day today. We're not looking at any uh, anything but mainly sunny conditions through most of the afternoon. That should boost those daytime highs back into the upper. 20s. You can see that fog there on our community hospital of Anaconda ICAM. Pay attention to that. Turn on those lights. Uh, you want to be seen as you're driving around. Uh, daytime highs stay chilly. We'll talk about our snow chances during the weekend and what to expect next week. That's coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. Our top story this half hour, three grizzly bears in Montana have tested positive for avian flu. That was, test was last fall. The bears, one near Kalispell, one near Augusta, and another de, near Depuyer, were all in poor condition, showing disorientation and partial blindness. All three have been euthanized. The bears were the first documented case of the deadly avian influenza in grizzlies. Montana Department of Fish, Wildlife and Park officials say it suspects the bears got the virus from eating infected birds. Now, while the CDC considers avian flu's risk to humans to be low, Montanans are advised to be cautious when handling game birds or dead animals. Other headlines, since July, MTN's Kristen Merkel has been investigating the staffing, delivery, and other challenges the Baxter Lane Post Office is dealing with here in Bozeman. On July 13th, we began hearing about customers who were complaining of missing mail and sporadic delivery. USPS blamed staffing. July 21st, we followed up. USPS admitted they were doing rolling deliveries due to those staffing shortages. At a Postal Service job fair on the 29th of July, there were only nine applicants for some 30 positions. Fast forward to October 24th, before the midterm election, there were reports of people who had not received their ballots in the mail. Then over the holidays, there were more complaints of missing packages and other mail. Now in the new year, Kristen reports that it seems this post office is still struggling with the same issues. You can't depend on the post office anymore. It's really sad. Margaret Treat lives in Bozeman, and she says she sees firsthand how staffing issues are affecting the Baxter Lane post office. Inside this post office, I was going to mail this, but forget it. The line is clear out to the door, and there's only two people in there serving. So I figure, well, this is, it's hard to get in here at a time when you don't have to spend. 40 minutes in line. She says her mail delivery is erratic and unreliable. When I put a letter in a blue mailbox, I'm not sure if it's going to get there anymore. I reached out to the USPS corporate office about the customer complaints at the Bozeman and Belgrade post offices. They emailed me this response. We have several unfulfilled positions in the Bozeman area, including the Belgrade office, and there may be individual days when a neighborhood may not receive mail. But we will rotate employees and assignments, and that mail is prioritized for delivery the following day. Senator Daines issued this statement in an effort to find a solution to the post office issues. I've spoken personally with Postmaster General DeJoy and I'm pressing the USPS to find a lasting solution to ensure Montana families and Montana businesses to receive high quality and reliable service. Senator Tester released this statement. Our postal workers in Bozeman are going above and beyond what is expected of them by continually skipping days off, working overtime, and picking up extra shifts to try to deliver the mail because Postmaster General Louis DeJoy's lack of leadership has left the region severely understaffed. I am pushing Postmaster DeJoy to step up and do more to support these local employees and ensure Montanans receive the service they depend on. 
As for treat, she doesn't expect to see a difference anytime soon. It's almost like I accept that it's going to be that way because it's been like that for a long time. In Bozeman, Kristen Merkel, MTN News. In other headlines this morning, Gallatin County Sheriff Search and Rescue just released its 2022 annual report. For the second year, the agency has broken a record for missions. Back in 2012, the team responded to 96 calls. A decade later, it responded to 140. Captain Scott Secor says it is surprising to see the team break the previous record. It was the busiest year in the history of search and rescue, which we didn't think was possible because we'd seen a 20 year trend of, you know, steadily climbing for three, four years max and then dropping off uh, very sharply. And we thought that maybe that would happen again based on statistics, but 2022 ended up being the busiest year in the history of search and rescue. Captain Secor says there is no firm reason why 2022 was so busy and adds the team has a few theories, but the most realistic explanation is that more people are moving to the area, which leads to more people exploring the backcountry. Other headlines, a group of Wyoming lawmakers saying no to electric cars. A bill introduced to the state legislature on Friday would ban the sale of new electric vehicles in the state by the year 2035. Jackie Coffin taking a closer look at the motivation behind the bill and the legislation here in Montana also aimed at electric cars. It's called the most scenic drive in America. The Beartooth Highway crisscrosses the Montana-Wyoming state lines and electric vehicle traffic is becoming more frequent here, just like many other places in the country. But for a handful of lawmakers in one of these states, that's not a welcome sight. Weary travelers aren't the only ones that can recharge at the historic Yodeler Inn in Red Lodge. Their cars can, too. So roughly six years ago, I started reading about it, and I found out that Tesla would install them for free um, and use it for your business, and I could use it for my business as a draw. So we're a destination charger. For inn owner Mac Dean, these four electric vehicle stations are a way to attract business while offering an increasingly in-demand service. If people want to use our chargers, they have to rent a room. It's just adding more to our, our hand. Linking Wyoming electric vehicle drivers like Dr. Scott Anderson of Jackson Hole to a growing nationwide network of chargers. It's community efforts that we all need to make some type of change to improve our health, and the environment in which we live. Dean and Dr. Anderson see electric vehicles as the wave of the future. Six Wyoming lawmakers disagree. We are concerned. Introduced by Republican State Senator Jim Anderson, Senate Joint Resolution 4 calls for the sale of new electric vehicles to be phased out of Wyoming by 2035. Senator Anderson told Fox Business that the move is mostly symbolic. Okay, but you're not gonna, again, you're not gonna penalize uh, companies or consumers that want to either sell or buy electrical vehicles. If, if there's a dealership in Wyoming, you're not going to try to shut it down. Oh, no, okay. no, no. We just wanted to make this statement. Meanwhile, back in Montana, two bills from Republican Representative Denley Logie seek to tax electric vehicle charging stations in ad registration fees for EVs, a move Dean calls expected and inevitable, just like the future of electric vehicle traffic. I can't say about Wyoming, but I mean, they're coming regardless. You can either get with a get with a program or not. In Red Lodge, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. 636 now. In 1896, Shodair Children's Hospital started as a home for orphaned or abandoned kids. Over the past century, the hospital has evolved to meet even more needs of Montana's youth, from treatment programs to education. And now it's preparing for the future. Ryan Berg shows us the hospital's new facility. After years of hard work and planning, Shodair Children's Hospital is opening its doors for open house events to their new 131,000 square foot hospital and has plans to officially open the doors later in January. The new hospital's been in the works for five years and the open houses this week will be the first chance of many that the hospital's partners have had to view the new facility. We're moving kids in here on January 31st, but the, the average community member needs to realize we've been working on this for the last six months. So it isn't we just move, you know, open the door one day and move patients here. There's been a whole different process of a new policies and procedures, new spaces, getting staff trained in that space. Showdayer CEO Craig Asved was on hand for the open house Tuesday. 
He tells me that sharing the facility ahead of its opening is critical and highlights the hard work and time put in by all the people who contributed to this project. I feel like we're on the right path of really showcasing a building that we've been in the midst of designing for the last five years and I think it will really show the community uh, the work that is here and what kids can expect when they come here. Asved also expressed his excitement to see the project nearly complete. It's fun to take a vision and a dream and see it all come together to, you know, we always say here is that this is a building and a space for the kids we take care of and our staff, and, and this is what they deserve. While each event focuses on specific stakeholder groups, Asved said having several events ensures that there are opportunities for anyone interested the opportunity to visit Shodair. The open house events began Tuesday, January 17th at 11 a.m. and will end on Thursday, January 19th at 7 p.m. Reporting in Helena, Ryan Berg, MTN News.